welcome back to my Country Craft Corner. So good to see you guys again. I missed you. <laughs> I am making this video on Friday afternoon, and as you can see, I'm not dressed in a beautiful outfit by any stretch of the imagination. I've been cleaning and getting ready for our guests to come, and now I'm fixing to make my strawberry shortcake and my fruit salad. So that is what I'm going to highlight in this video for you guys. So first up will be the strawberry shortcake. You all will see how easy peasy this is to do, honestly, and it works out every time and people just love it. It's kind of an old fashioned kind of, we're going to use jello to make this. But some of the old recipes and easy peasy recipes hold strong even in this day and age. And then I will move on over into the fruit salad. You guys have seen me do the fruit salad a couple times, but I'm doing, but I'm doing a um, very large ba mega batch today. So you guys will be able to see that. All right, so let me turn the phone down and get it turned around and pointed down. And I will start to do my strawberry shortcake. Here's the recipe. And I'll also have this in the description, along with the fruit salad recipe in the description. Write down the recipe if you want to try it. All right, I'll be right back. And I'll be ready to make this quick little strawberry shortcake. Be right Okie dokie, I'm back. I'm going to start simply by, I always buy an angel food cake to do this cake. I never make one myself, although angel food cake is one of Chris's favorite cakes, but he just likes to eat it plain. So it doesn't taste any different than if you just buy one already made at the store. Obviously this one was $3. It's worth $3 to me not to have to make the angel food cake. So first thing we do is open it up and I usually just kind of try to dump it in dig it out of there there we go and then you just simply tear it apart and spread it all around the bottom I usually use one of these foil disposable pans saves me washing dishes later and also take it outside and serve it outside without worrying about anything getting broken. So I use these little foil pans, they work great. Alrighty, there we go. Wow, that was hard, wasn't it? I don't know whether we can handle this or not. All right, let me go wash my hands. I'll be right back, I'm all sticky. Ugh. Okay. All right, the next thing that I'm going to do is boil some water. What you do is you get a large box of Jello like this, and this calls for four cups of water, two boiling and two cold. So we're going to reduce the recipe by one cup for, to make the Jello. So I'm going to start out by getting one cup, bringing one cup of water to boil. I use my handy dandy microwave for that. And then the next thing, I'm going to need two cups of really, really, really cold water. But for one of the cups, I'm going to see how much of the juice of these strawberries. These are just, these were frozen in the frozen section, sliced strawberries with sugar. And I let them thaw out, and they are really kind of goopy and juicy. So I tried to find, I used to have a little strainer, but I don't know what happened to it, so I'm just going to use my hand. I'm going to see how much liquid I can get out of these, and I'm going to add, I'm going to add to this to make two cups of cold water. Alrighty, and here is some very, very, very cold water. got it out of my refrigerator, and I'm going to add cold water to this to bring it up to two cups, maybe a little bit over. There we go. Now, 
We get the boiling water. Grab a whisk and dissolve the jello in the hot water, the boiling water. I, try to, I like to do it slowly. I find I've done it just all at once at times, and it tends to get a little clumpy on me if I just pour it in there all at once. There we go. Boy, does that smell good and fresh and reminds, reminds me of summer for sure. All right, so that's good and dissolved. Actually, I'm gonna whisk it a little bit more. It still looks a little grainy. Now I'm going to add my two cups of cold strawberry liquid in water. And then I'm going to add in the rest of the strawberries. Mix it all together. And then I know you're gonna know what we do next. How hard is this, you guys? Not hard. <laughs> All the strawberry goodness out of there. And we simply pour it down over the antifruit cake. And I try to, you know, disperse the strawberries pretty nicely. And then the spatula, and I just kind of smush the angel food cake down in there and move around the strawberries if I see them bunched up. I just, just make sure that it's that all, all the angel food cake is sopping up all that strawberry goodness there we go now what I normally do is put this in the refrigerator and let it set up for a little while but and then I put the Cool Whip on it. But for this purpose, I think I'm gonna to try to go ahead and get the Cool Whip on this. So let me get the Cool Whip out. There's the Cool Whip. I have a big tub of it, which is 16 ounces. Probably won't use it all, but I like to I like to be sure that I'll have enough. So, just smooth it on there. It's about three quarters of it, I would say. Let's see if that'll cover everything. Do be really careful because it's pretty soupy right now. <laughs> Right out to the edge. Oops, that's all right. Cover that up. Shh, y'all didn't see that happen.
I think we're going to need some more. Definitely. There we go. They even get quiet when I'm icing a cake, don't I? <laughs> I can't walk and chew gum at the same time. There we go. If you want to, you can take some fresh strawberries and slice them up and put them on the top. I normally don't because this thing is gone pretty quick. So I don't really bother too much with that. <laughs> but it would look pretty if you wanted to do that. So there we go. My version of strawberry shortcake. Put it in the refrigerator. Let me get a paper towel and wipe that. I usually do make this the night before. I'm gonna serve it. And put it in the refrigerator and let it set up. Really nice. And it always sets up always never made it when it hasn't set up so there we go strawberry shortcake i'll be right back with the fruit salad <laughs> Okie dokie, here we are getting ready to make fruit salad. I've already done a little preparation here. I've cut up one container of strawberries, and this is a, I usually get, use one and a half to two of these 32 ounce, two pound containers of strawberries. I had some left over from we've been eating on them all week so i just use the rest of about a half so i'm going to use one and a half today it's just you know the way i look at it the more strawberries the better you know can't go wrong with a bunch of strawberries so i'm going to go ahead and finish cutting this container up and then i'll be adding sugar to them so i'm going to speed up here as we cut up these strawberries. I could bore you guys to tears with this action. <laughs> Be right back. Obviously I underestimated my bowl size. So this is the bowl I'm going to put all of the fruit salad in. So I'm just gonna dump these strawberries in and we will put sugar on them in here and let them macerate in here. So I usually use at least four tablespoons of sugar and I'm making a big batch. So I'm gonna need every bit of four tablespoons. We like it to be pretty sweet. And four tablespoons in the scheme of everything isn't that much sugar when we're talking about this much fruit salad. So four tablespoons of regular white sugar, mix them up. And they're gonna make some lovely syrup, just like that. Now I'm gonna take a little bit of time off camera to open up all my cans. So I will be right back. Okie dokie folks, I'm back. <laughs> These, this has been sitting here a little while. I'll tell you, it's made nice syrup. I stopped and fed the dogs and did a couple other things. So I'm ready to dump the rest of the fruit. And the only fruit cans that you do not drain are the peaches. You use peach chunks and heavy syrup. 
So that just adds to the sweetness. So here we go. All the peaches go in. with their juice and some it looks like they didn't really I'll try girl that one peel that one very well okay let me throw these cans away and all of the rest of this gets drained I already did that can of pineapple tidbits have to drain the rest of these. Trust me, it will all fit. I've done this recipe in here before, and it fits. <laughs> these are the mandarin oranges. Maraschino cherries in half or fourths and put them in and then the only other thing to go in tomorrow is a couple of bananas but don't put those in until these things are the worst things to cut can never find I only like to do them in half. Chris said, you can leave those out if you want. Leave this over here and that'll help. There we go. He's obviously not too thrilled with maraschino cherries. I kind of like them. Although, you know what? When I get like a milkshake or something and they put a maraschino cherry on it, I don't like that. But I like them in here. How weird is that? Anyway, I'll speed up a little bit, and I'll be back when I'm finished cutting these little dudes up. And here we go. That is it. And as I said, the only thing that's left to go in here, I'm just going to stir everything up, is a couple of bananas. And I put them in at the, you know, right before I'm going to serve it. But I also like to make this the day a day ahead so that it has time, you know, gives those flavors time to marry. Don't I sound like a chef? <laughs> I am not a chef. Pretty good cook, but far from being a chef, that's for sure. But there we go. Sometimes Donita, my cousin, will put a few blueberries on the top of it right before she serves it, but I didn't pick up any blueberries. I looked at them, they weren't very, didn't look very good, so I didn't get any blueberries. But I will definitely add the two uh, bananas tomorrow.